<clears throat> Hello, people. How are you? What a day of physics today. I tell you what. Um, let's, uh, let's formalize some of our findings on uh, things that move in vertical circles. All right, here's one case with an object going, with an object moving over a hill. Not through a loop like we looked at in class, but over the top of a hill. Um, now, for sure, for sure, anywhere on this, well, what I should say is the one place that we're, that I'll ever ask you about or that we'll ever investigate is the top of the hill. And at the top of the hill, well, well no matter where we are, there's always an MG. Um, since we're on a hill, the surface, there has to be a normal force that the surface exerts on the object, and that's got to be upward. But here's the story. It's got to be smaller than mg. How do you know that? Um, well, we know um, n is less than mg because the net force has to be towards the center. It says in. Net force in. So that's one thing. In general, well, if we were to write a net force statement, it's going to look like this. Mg minus n equals m, well, I'm going to write it as v squared over r instead of ac. All right, how do we know it's mg minus n? Well, in, out. I'll put a little positive there. Remember, our positive centripetal direction is towards the center. All right? N points away from the center. It's out. It's negative. Okay? Now, it's possible to feel weightless as you go over the top of the hill. Well, here's the, here's the important part. The feel... That refers to not how much you actually weigh. I mean, you weigh whatever you weigh. So why do you feel like you weigh different amounts? Well, in this case, because of what happens to normal force. So if you feel like you're weightless, that means that it's because the seat doesn't push on you at all. And so, well, in that case, we would just have well, our mg minus n. Well, the n goes away because it's zero. We get mg is mv squared over r, right? We get this part and this part. But if you feel weightless, it really is because all we have now is that mg pointing in towards the center. There is no normal. Right, we can even get rid of these masses. Um, you know, and then you'd solve for what you want to solve for. But notice, a uh, real important part is that, what's this? Well, that's really the AC. If your centripetal acceleration is G, well, feels like your weightless. Now, it feels like you weigh half your weight. There's, any, there's an infinite number of these that we could do. Um, it feels like you weigh a third of your weight. It feels like you weigh a tenth of your weight. If we say it feels like you weigh half your weight, that tells us something about the normal force. It says that the normal force is, well, half your weight. What people will do here when they write these is they will change mg into mg over 2 or something. This is constant. Do not change what mg is. M your weight is your weight. Even though you feel like you weigh something different, you don't. But if the seat only pushes up on you with a force equal to half your weight, well, then you feel like you weigh half your weight. So our net force statement now turns into mg minus, well, I'll just start from the beginning. It's mg minus normal force equals mv squared over r. Well, that's mg minus, well, the normal force is mg over 2 is mv squared over r. Well, and this is mg minus half of mg, so that's just mg over 2. Come on, would you? Love it. M. 
g fine equals m v squared over r and yes we can get rid of those and what does it say this says remember the centripetal acceleration is now half of g all right i wouldn't you know i wouldn't start there and say well that you know this means the centripetal acceleration is half of g just you know here's where you really have to start if something says it feels like you weigh half your weight well that normal force is half your weight it's just nice to point out that that's a result all right notice we make a substitution for the normal force we don't change what your weight is your weight is your weight your weight is mg done and done okay there you know, a real important part is writing the net force statement, which comes from a good free body diagram. All right, so that's over the top of the hill. Next, let's look at our revisit our vertical um, our vertical loop stuff around the loop. Well, there's two places we want to talk about at the top and at the bottom. So, well, let's look at each of those um, separately. Top, bottom. All right, so, uh, well, at the top, we got an mg. And with the bottom, you got the same mg. That's important. It's the same mg. You weigh the same no matter where you are. Well, at the bottom, right, we have to have a normal force here and here. The normal force has to be greater than mg. Why is that? Well, because the net force has to be toward the center. At the top, normal is also inward. And how big is it? Well, that totally depends. I'll show you on what. Uh, it could be as big as mg. It could be smaller. It could be bigger. It doesn't, you know, there's kind of doesn't matter. Um, but let's write some general net force statements based on each of these uh, each of these things. So let's say, like for example, in general, at the top, well, my net force statement looks like this. Why are we adding them? Because they both a point in the same direction and b both point in the positive direction, which is toward the center. All right at the bottom. What do we got? Well, we got the, uh, uh, well, it's going to be this, n minus mg equals mv squared over r. Why minus? Well, here the normal force is in, mg is out. Fair enough? Okay, so to feel weightless, well, that means, right, that normal force would have to be zero. All right, so for this one, at the top, that just means that mg is mv squared over r. Fine. You know, there's, maybe there's an expression for v if you'd like, right? v is the square root of gr. Yep, that works fine. But at the bottom, check this out. Feels weightless. Well, that would mean we have no normal force pointing inward and all we have is a force outward well that's just can't happen if this object's going to move in a circular in a in a circular in a circle you have to have a net force inward so we can't get rid of the normal force and so you can't feel weightless at the bottom because remember n has to be greater than mg. n can't be zero. Okay, feels like you weigh half your weight. Um, let's see, that means for us up here we get, well, this means that n, the normal force, is mg over 2. So we'd have, let's see, our normal force so I'm starting with this, but instead of normal force, I'm going to write mg over 2 plus mg equals mv squared over r. And 
Well, I could write this as 3mg over 2 equals mv squared over r. And, well, we could get rid of those and solve what for what you want to solve for. So we can say, if you want, 3 halves gr. All right? Well, at the bottom, let's see, feels like you weigh half your weight. That from here would give us mg over 2. Well, basically what it would say is, again, n is less than mg. And at the bottom, that can't happen. So same thing here. No. n has to be bigger than mg at the bottom, or we wouldn't have a net force towards the middle. All right, feels like you weigh three times your weight. Well, that means that, um, right, that normal is 3mg. So our net force statement here is, well, n plus mg, so that's 3mg plus mg equals mv squared over r, or 4mg is mv squared over r. We can get rid of that factor of m. And if we wanted to, let's say we could say that uh, V is the square root of 4 GR. Now at the bottom, could we feel like we're three times your weight? Well, now you can. You should, you know, think about that. At the bottom of a hill, you go, oh, I feel heavy. Right? It feels like you're being smushed into your chair. Right? Well, that can happen because now we say, well, m minus mg turns into 3mg minus mg is mv squared over r. Well, that's 2mg equals mv squared over r. Get rid of the masses. And v is the square root of 2gr. So here's something interesting to notice. You can feel weightless at both places. Top, sorry, not weightless. You can feel like you weigh three times your weight in both places, top and bottom. But at the top, you have to be going faster than you do at the bottom. Because at the top, your weight also points in, but at the bottom, your weight points out. Okay? So... Got to be able to get to these net force statements. And then you got to be able to handle these things. What's it feel like? What's it feel like? What's it feel like? Sometimes people call these apparent weight. Not your parents. Apparent. Apparently, you know, what's it seem like your weight is? What's it feel like your weight is? Well, we're really talking about what the normal force, in this case, what the normal force is. Okay? No, right. And, you know, just so we're sure, where do these net force statements come from? They come from a good free body diagram. Gotta be able to do that. Next. But I should call this the dangler. The, the, yeah, so a pendulum, a swinging object uh, in general. Now, here I should also talk about I'll do bottom and top for this too. Well, at the bottom here, here's what we'd have. We'd have mg. Huh, how do I do this? At the top, let's just, sorry, it's not actually at the top of that path, but um, at the top, this thing would have an mg, the same mg as well. All right, at the bottom, what we need to have is a tension that's bigger than the weight, right? Bottom for sure, T has to be bigger than mg so we get a net force towards the center. At the top, it's just like the normal force from before. T could be, well, could be equal to mg. Um, we don't even need it. Could be zero, could be bigger than mg, could be smaller than mg. Um, there's, there's an infinite number of values of T up there. But down at the bottom, it has to be at least as big as well, excuse me, it has, it has to be bigger than mg. It can't be just as big as. It has to be bigger. All right, so at the bottom, 
um, let's see, we have T minus mg is mv squared over r. At the top, we have T plus mg is mv squared over r. And now if we're swinging something, and the thing that we're swinging feels weightless, well, that's because the tension is zero. If it feels like the thing we're swinging weighs twice as much as it actually does, it's because the tension is two times the weight. All right, so to feel weightless at the bottom, well, look, that doesn't work. Because remember, T has to be bigger than MG. So T can't be zero. If there's no tension, this object here at the bottom doesn't keep moving in a circular path. But at the top, if we get rid of this t, all right, well, we just get mg and then v squared over r. And here's our statement for v. If the object feels like it is twice as heavy as it actually is at the bottom, well, okay, yeah, we can do that. Because then we'd have T minus mg is mv squared over r. So we'd have 2 mg minus mg is mv squared over r. And, um, well, you can get rid of the masses now if you want. And that leaves us with 2g minus g. Oh, that's just g. Or... Now that's interesting, isn't it? that here, to feel weightless at the top, you got to go at that speed. But if you go that speed at the bottom, it feels like you weigh twice as much as you actually weigh. That's just, that's just I don't know, that's just kind of neat. At the top, could you feel like you weigh twice your weight? Um, sure. All right, so we'd say from T plus mg is mv squared over r. We'd say 2 mg plus mg is mv squared over r. This is 3mg mv squared over r. And if we felt like it, there's an expression for v. All right, again, there's an infinite number of what do you feel like you weigh or, you know, the tension on the string is three times the object's weight or whatever it is there. Uh, there's an infinite number of them. It's just a matter of, you know, translating that into a simple expression. But remember, this mg force, same mg force, that never changes. Objects weigh what they weigh, and it doesn't matter what part of a path they're on or what it feels like, they still weigh what they weigh. They might feel like they weigh something else, but they weigh what they weigh. Okay? All right? That's it. Yep, that's old stuff for stuff from today. Uh, that's it, folks. Okay, so there's your vertical circle stuff. Um, you know, draw yourself a free body diagram. Write yourself a net force statement. Inwards positive, outwards negative. Um, AC is V squared over R. So we set our net force statements. Right? If we start with these, we, you know, we, whatever this is, it is, and then that's mv squared over r, and then we have to apply any of these stated conditions about what things seem like. All right, you'll get some practice with those coming up soon. Adios.